nowadays uh, everybody says dream you should dream do you dream about your delivery speech or dream about do you visualize actually visualizing how you are going to deliver the speech during your rehearsals towards the very end a very powerful tool. It can add the toppings for your team. Uh, prepare and rehearse well, but your visualization of how you are going to say, how you are going to move, this will really add value to the speech. This is another thing which you can very easily do without much effort. The choice, as I say, is yours. The evaluator for the last speech for the day is Mr. Spostar Thomas Spostar. He will read the objectives of the advanced project communicating on the video number two. Welcome him, Peter. Toastman Jayanti is going to attend project number two from the highly demanding communicating video manual, where she would be interviewed by a host of the show, and she would be the star of the show. Kindly remember friends that at one level we are the audience, there's also the other audience, namely the camera that she will be addressing. All the best due time is five seconds. Regarding the questions I have given, Toastmaster Jayanti says she did uh, some haircutting experiment uh, with this hair when young. Then to hide the result of that, fellow has to wear a cap all the time so that nobody will be able to see what is happening. Not a very hair raising experience. <laughs> no other hair crushing or what. To lead a peaceful life is my life ambition. To lead a peaceful life. He will give a piece of his mind later on about this. Learn to do better scripting. Make my mentees obey me by doing their project regularly. That is calling God Madam nowadays. She will ask to be a mentor. When I was my VP, I always used to ensure they are present in the mentees project speech. And mention the name in the agenda too. The role is very essential. VP should not allow them to do projects if they have not got mentors approval. That is wrong. Technology transfer please. From the old VP to the new VP. Toastmaster Gandhi is a multifaceted personality. We all know, so you know, she was the past president of this club too. A wonder woman. Nowadays, a yonder woman. Because we don't see her very often here, though we hear about her exploits elsewhere. She is closing in on that ATM, I think, with the other piece in the ACS towards the very end of ACS. Good luck to her. Welcome to Spostar Jayanti to for the interview show, video interview show. The title of that is Work Life Balance. Please welcome her and other role players. Hosting 
these shores. And now to do on this part as a guest, it gives me a goosebump. And many for your questions to be answered. Show the questions. Sure. So ideally, our show revolves around uh, women in farming. We would like to know what is your say on women in farming? When you talk about women in farming, I remember the day when I interviewed the famous singer Sudhara Gunadan. I happened to interview her. She was telling, you know, the first women, I mean, the first enemy for any women. Can you just name? I was just thinking, can I name mother-in-law or sister-in-law? Whom to name about? And she said, no. The same woman, the conscious, that is stopping her to grow. That was a thought-provoking idea. I said, yes. She went on saying that if the woman wants to buy something during a Diwali, can anyone in her household stop? No. But if she wanted to do something which is not very convincing, she'll put the blame on somebody else and then go away or shy away from whatever she wanted to do. So that is where the empowerment has. Every woman is empowered. It's like how convincing you do it for your family members. For example now, after my um, two kids birth, after my wedding, I wanted to become an engineer. How is that possible? I said, uh, Sundar, I want to become a chemical engineer. Do something for me. He said, yes, do something called AMI. It's very tough. If you get balance, you both your kids and do it, please go ahead. It, it empowered me to do something on my own, to stand on my own leg, to be called as an engineer. And by God's grace, I came out of all India third rank in that and showed that women can achieve. But I ensured that my sons only scored the best marks in their school. I used to plan accordingly what we miss out or what we take for granted is a little bit of planning. It's okay, I am going to do it, irrespective of whether my mother-in-law is pleased or my husband is pleased. No, that's not women empowerment or women liberalization talks about. We need to ensure, make them aware what is the benefit for you and what is the entire benefit that they would be getting in a happy family. If you convince everybody in your house, plan, then you can achieve anything as well. That's my thought about women empowerment. That's really great to know, ma'am. But like you talked about uh, how you did your engineering after marriage and having two kids. We would like to know that what are the challenges that you face predominantly because you were studying as well as also handling your personal life. What were the major challenges? That First you challenge is that their quarterly exams and my exams will follow the same day. <laughs> their half yearly exams and my exams will follow the same day. And so conveniently, my husband would be traveling abroad at the same time. <laughs> so, one way I would see it in a positive or in a sanguine way is that there are no disturbance at home, saying that you're torturing my kids, nobody to say so. So, I, in that way, I was blessed that nobody was around me to guide me or to put a stop to whatever I was doing. I planned accordingly that if they were at school, that was my study time. And I learned how not to push everything at the fag end of your exams to study, which helped me to know more about engineering. So I really did an engineering study rather than getting marks as an engineer. That was awesome thing. And of course, after 11 o'clock, I used to draw a Lakshman Ray car on my house. My sons were not supposed to draw, I mean, come out of the line and disturb me during my studies. I was a very strict and a bad mother, I don't know. But that helped me to complete my engineering in a short duration and to come out with flying colors. So there were a lot of challenges. Every woman, why women, everybody will face challenge in their life. It's how you take it, how to make the negative into positive matters more. It's really great to hear, ma'am. Now, we also know that you are a brilliant dancer. So, the challenges after having two kids, you still continue dancing. How? Okay, since this show is just five to seven minutes, I just have to cut short my interview with you in a very precise way. Dancing had always been behind my mind. I became a dancer when I was just five years old. A dance master was brought home and I was learned to dance. That grew in my blood always. But Men are men, you know. The challenge was when I got married, dance, 
I see everybody shaking hands with you. I don't like this. It was the first comment I received from us. And there's bits of silence also. <laughs> <laughs> and that was true. Every man or every husband is very good to you, but also very possessive. But how to win over that? How to explain that this is an art where it, it, is, it is to nurture you and give you a holistic uh, happiness in you. My mother-in-law was a great support to me. She used to sing when I used to dance. So this gave a wonderful harmony at home where we found that, yes, mutually, they both are happy and not disturbing him. So maybe that was one of the reasons why he encouraged me. And my kids, of course, because it also goes to the entire family, where they love me dancing and uh, they would be my mediators. When I go on stage, they would welcome everybody and the amount of enthusiasm, the whole family was dancing for me. So that made me still go on to stage and still having a grandchild of seven months still, I'm still performing on stage. And I love the family support. Wow, that was really, really great to Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We still have many questions, but just because we have limited amount of time, we would really, we might recall Thank you again. Thank you so much. Thank you so Thank much, you much for being on the show. And good night, everyone. Thank you for being on the show. Not a good night from the meeting. <laughs> Please give your feedback. <laughs> The qualified speakers are Krishna, V. N. Subramaniam, and Jayanti Sundar. Krishna, V. N. Subramaniam, and Jayanti, please vote the same sheet. The best speaker from your choice, you can vote who is the best.